Fight started. Yeah, you won quite convincingly. I yeah, I was, I was trying to be a bit too fancy, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't. Uh, by the time I you know, started watching on you most of the way through, I think you had won or left before the eight ball and yeah, something I was, I was like that. Trying to line up insane shots and just test myself because uh, Osu hadn't, hadn't played much pool before. Yeah, fair but enough. Looks like Mello's going to be doing our stage bands, so All right. we'll take a look. And very familiar with this matchup, just played it. Yep. Must be thinking about the difference between myself and uh, Toe Dizzle here. Yeah, honestly, I haven't played either of you enough to really know. I mean, from what um, from what Handman was telling me before, Toe Dizzle has like a very similar playstyle of like relying on the rock usage and things like that. Right, but, right. But uh, shard usage isn't quite there. Okay. Um, interested to see how he's going to pull off a, a set like this. Like, uh, Ello can really go on the aggression, and depending on the stage, they will just like keep coming at you. So. To be aware of that and to keep yourself out of range of those approaches, really important in this matchup. Have to take advantage of Rano's like lessened aerial drift. So right. Bit, bit more difficult for Rano to sort of close that gap while you're in the air. Yeah. Right, going into Jules Vale. Let's check it out. All right. <laughs> so, one thing is um, Crag. This um. Matchup's quite difficult to get some of the combos off, and you need to really be aware of runners' D options because it's it's kind of a unique um, matchup in, in terms of your opponent's drift in hit stun. So uh, Nair is one of your main tools of doing like DI mix-ups and things like that. You get a lot of like really good stuff where you can get Nairs into up airs and kill off the top quite a lot. Right. So if uh, Mello's combo DI is really on point. It's going to become very difficult for Toe Dizzle to get more than just like a couple hit chains going on over the course of this set. Right, right, interesting. And then when you're playing against a you know, runner, of course, has such strong combo yeah. ability himself, like that could really stack up against the crack player, I can imagine. I mean, at the start of this first stock, we've seen Toe Dizzle lose it quite a bit early in terms of Craig. Um, you need to take advantage of your weight and make sure your DI is on point because you need those stocks to last quite a bit. Um, Ellie, obviously, having some difficulty getting these edge guards against the wall pillars and things like that. Um, charging the needles like that and good use and timing of those can really shut down the approach to the stage. But yeah, it can be quite difficult to actually punish Crag once he gets that wall pillar set up going. It's and, just such a comfy spot, isn't it, for Crag? Oh, yeah, it absolutely that. is. And Melo's done a terrific job there chasing him out and leading that up into another fair to kill off the side. <laughs> This is the big thing. If Toadus is going to rely on tools like Down Special and Rock, he needs to make sure that he has the space that Mello can't just approach and punish him for it. Yeah. Keeping that range and distance and knowing how far your opponent can extend, like the immediate threat bubble, as it were, really important. <laughs> Interesting interaction there. If you manage to block Rano's momentum from the up special before the first hitbox, they just don't go anywhere. Yeah, right. Yeah. The hitbox just doesn't break. Rock, like, oh, they're in a hitbox at that point? I can't remember how. Yeah, not when the momentum works. starts. So if you block it like that with the rock, they just they just can't recover. It just right. locks them out from getting back onto the stage. Yeah, right. It's such an interesting option. Yeah. Completely intended, I imagine. <laughs> 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 Sounds, yeah, very intended. Yeah, absolutely. Just like we had a very intentional victory from... <laughs> <laughs> Great segue. <laughs> Thank Great you. segue. <laughs> Absolute master. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's be real. I don't really know what I'm doing. Speaking but... of masters, what a mm. terrific win from Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and game two. Here we go. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, I'm not sure if anyone picked up on the commentary before, but uh, everyone was having a bit of a laugh. Uh, Melotech's first stage ban against me last game was last set was Tower of Heaven. I was in disbelief. I was like, what are you doing? That's your best stage. Yeah, I was sitting there watching, <laughs> sitting there behind you spectating and just heard your genuine outrage. Everyone everyone was having a bit of a good laugh, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> quite, quite funny that Tony Dizzle's actually just counterpicked him to, to Tower of Heaven now. I'm, I'm just in disbelief at the, the stage picks from this scene. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, because I, I don't know very much about either of the, playing either of these characters and what they're looking for. Is it something to do with the platforms that make this oh, such the, a good the stage platform, for Oh, the platform movement for Rano just um, removes a lot of his weaknesses. And in terms of recovery as well, um, being able to edge cancel on those platforms is really good too. Right, right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because, oh, of course, with Rano's... Speed. Yeah, 
all I'm, of a sudden he's got all those options with platforms. I'm sure we'll see with how Malotech's moving across the stage. It just makes his movement uh, in a horizontal way. It just It's really seamless how he can right. move back and forth that way. And you don't feel like you're stuck in the air as much as you do on other stages. So, yeah, strong stage for Rano for sure. Ooh, Ooh. Very nice carry off the top with those up airs. So just some poor DI in that initial up air. Um, I've said on stream earlier, but with Rano's up air, you have to hold away from the direction that they're facing. So it sends slightly, um, slightly outwards like that. So if you DI the other way, you're not really getting the full extent of your DI out. And yeah, it does lead to situations like that. But you're going to get hit again with another up air and just die for it. Right, yeah. <laughs> does really feel like that Mello is controlling the pace of this, uh, this set so far though, and that's, that's because of how, how aggressive he's being. Or she, rather, I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does seem to be doing such a good job, really, with keeping the aggression up. She does have, you know, the percentage down on this last stock. Craig's been quite comfortable here. These parries as well. A long way off stage to try and come back, <laughs> but... Yeah, that, uh, that up special, the, uh... Hitbox that a lot of people, um, they call it the Mind Blast, I think it is, or the Brain Blast, something like that. Right. It just <laughs> extends so far out. It makes it really difficult for Crag to time rock throws and things like that, or hold that area um, yeah. with the R-Special. So a lot of uh, a lot of Crag players, they like to play it more vertically, stay above the Rano in terms of their approach to the stage. But yeah, solid finish there. So seeing that down special come into play and getting that combo into the up strong, good way for Totals to close out that game. It's an impressive turnaround as well, because we were saying that how in control Melotech looked over the course of that game. Yeah, yeah, but I think without really realizing it, Totozil had sort of done a very good job at taking those stocks, the opportunities that he had. I mean, being a heavy character like Crag, it only takes a few hits to really rack up the percent, and if you make a couple of mistakes like that, I mean, that down special, easy 10% right there, I think it is, and yeah. it normally chains into something, something else that's going to hit you for quite a lot of damage too. Yeah, I certainly think, like, you know, trying to learn the Crag matchup myself, trying to work out what you're meant to do <laughs> DIY-wise against down special, because you're often thinking about something else. I mean, it's one, one of those attacks where the best way to, you know, play around getting, uh, sorry, play around the DI of it is just not get hit by it at all. <laughs> yeah, or parry it, you know. You just gotta, like you just gotta that. avoid it. You can see, um, Totals' DI on these back airs and things as price forward airs, like, he goes really far out horizontally. Makes his approach to the wall quite a bit slower. And it's something that Melotech hasn't taken advantage of so far. It's yeah. something that, like, those forward specials and things, really easily punishable if you can chase them out. You know exactly when you're gonna, they're going to finish it. It's yeah. full half a second of end lag on it, and facing them down in the air like that just means that Rano can get some opportunities. Just, like, a cheeky nair, knock him out, forward air to spike him, things like that. Yeah. Or, you know, just take the up air off the top of the stage. Yeah, good when use of the platforms can. there to mix up that and... Get the kill off the top. Yeah, the platforms on this stage are always so interesting, I think, being so tall right at the edge of the stage like that. Because of the options it gives for recoveries and edge guards. As you were saying, I'm sure it's a very nice tool for Crag against It is a favourite stage of Malotex as well. It's one that I was banning, and it's probably not like a really strong Rano stage at start. It's right. just, it's the stage that Malotex is the most comfortable with. Right. So taking away comfort fix is sometimes better than focusing on the matchup itself. Yep. Like, I, I definitely feel like Malotech is going to be far more comfortable here than some of the other counter picks they, they, they potentially had at their advantage. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I know you, you know, I've heard you talk many a time about your frustrations with the lack of stage theory that exists in the Australian <laughs> rower scene. And, um, you know, comfort picks really are just... You know, I think I just get too focused on the competitive theory, but <laughs> really, it's it's all about the players in Australia for the most part. Um, you know, hopefully, once everyone's progressing into that that later stages of the the higher mid level, higher, no top level play, start considering some of those options quite a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially with a lot of our rising players too, going to reach the point where they have to think about that now. See, that's the thing. All you Victorian players here, you haven't had me yelling at you for a year about stages. That's the one <laughs> thing the scene's been lacking. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're back. Here now I'm back. Yeah, of course. <laughs> anyway, there's a game going on in front of us. Melotech's um, doing a really good job at just holding on to this stock, keeping the lead and building up percentage and pressure on the Toadizzle. One thing that I think is worth noting is that Mello is sort of forcing Toadizzle to approach 
is area platforms. So as soon as Mello is holding a position under the platforms, that's their comfort area. And they're sort of telling Tozer, like, I'm not going to cross this gap because I know it's going to be bad for me. You have to be the one to approach me. Right. And it's sort of led to a few situations in that last stock right there. But Toadizzle's just made a couple of mistakes in his approach. And Malatek's just been able to catch him out for it. Uh, taking taking that game with a solid two stock, later percents in that second stock. Could have been could have been a single stock victory, but nonetheless, two stock. Yeah. Yeah, I, th <laughs> I mean, it looks like we're seeing a lot of what you were sort of suggesting, that Craig can have difficulty getting too much of a combo going. Yeah. Against well, Abrano. Rockwell, again, like it's a similar situation where the centre stage area is hard for Rano to cross, but I do fear that these blast zones are you know, very scary for both characters in that Craig doesn't really get as much advantage out of his weight. He's still dying at like 80% off the sides. Yeah. So we will see. Yeah, well, I mean, I think everyone's a little bit scared of Rockwall and the <laughs> tiny blast zones on the side. It's just, it's just such an intimidating feeling, like knowing that at any moment you could get hit by a an unexpected move. Yeah, I'm not. Death. I'm not sure if we have any Rockwell fans in the chat. I haven't bothered checking. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly remember that when I used to be playing Ori, that I had some uh, disagreements with Katsune that I thought this wasn't that great an Ori stage. Oh, it's a, actually it's a brilliant Ori stage. I flatly disagree with you. <laughs> well, I mean, look, I didn't really know Ooh. what I was talking about, but at the same time, I feel like Ori, especially, you just have so few options to. It just was very close to dying off the top in that up air. He had the, the poor DI in on it, but I mean like very close percents to actually just dying off the top there. Well, getting the Dakus, forward strong, an interesting choice at this percent. <laughs> He's going for the down strong again. He's not, not quite setting up nearly as much as what he could be there. <laughs> I mean, look, he's, he's got 156%. It's rock wall. You I never mean, know what you might get. Yeah, those are, those are high damage attacks, I guess. It's just um, it's interesting to see. <laughs> <laughs> I will say he's hung onto this stock quite a bit longer than I would have thought. He um, certainly has. I mean, we're talking about, you know, dying early on rock wall, and we've got both players over 100%. I mean, key difference there. Odos will now a full stock up, and Malatek <laughs> is in that, that range where he's going to die. Yeah. Fishing for the, the Dakas there, not quite, and almost in a situation where Tony's would have got the reversal kill off him too. Oh, no, I don't oh, want to be I doing that. <laughs> what is going on? Potentially just needed to get behind him, because you can always take the wall there. It just seems very greedy. That's straight purple! <laughs> Finally! Yeah. Finally, Toadizzle dies. I think we all know what a silly game this has been so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're in this early percent rage where Mellow Tech can sort of take advantage of his, uh, his tools, get get a nice big combo off, and play around the pillar there. It's quite scary doing the pillar like that, so if your opponent's grounded, um, Rhino's always going to have time to hit you with an aerial of their choice, really. All, all of Rhino's aerials quite fast. Um... But definitely scary to be pulling out a pillar like that aggressively. Ooh. Yeah, I certainly know there's a trend amongst a lot of the crag players around here to sort of pillar in neutral like that. And yeah, exactly as yeah. you said, it's just so easy to get that aerial out. And Not quite neutral if you are so oh. certain that your opponent's going to be approaching you as aggressively as Mallow has. So a, a couple of these have been absolutely fine and have put Toadizzle advantage. But you can see he's maybe relying on it a little bit too much right now. Could get in a situation where he can get punished for it. So we'll see if that happens, but... Well... Not quite sure. Yeah. But that is a purple screen. Certainly was. F smash again, coming clean. Coming that through rather. Brings us to game five of this set all of a sudden. Wow, game five already, I didn't even realise. Didn't expect it to be this close after the first few games, quite honestly. No, neither did I. It was look you know, it looked like I just was able to, you know, pull through with game two, but Melotech looked very in control, but yet here we are. Mellow's had much more tournament experience in general than Toadizzle. So it's it's good to see Toadizzle adapt to how, how Mellow's been playing and bring it back like this. Like it's something that it's a skill that not all players have and it's it's not something that they maybe have immediately but they gain over time. That makes sense. Yeah, it's certainly been very like way more noticeable than I ever expected. <laughs> the, you know, how different it is playing in a tournament setting. So that experience will absolutely come through the further we get into the set and the further we get into the bracket as well. The stage like Frozen Fortress, uh, at least platform coverage, it, it kind of means that whoever's in control of the center stage area or the top platforms and forces the other person to approach can really control the pace of the game. And the way that this has been going so far, it still feels like Mellow is sort of forcing those approaches. Um, 
in certain ways. Like he's, you could see Mallow holding underneath that platform that he just, she knows that's the position that she wants to be in and trying to force Toadizel to get down to the, her level. Yeah, right. Just trying to, well, yeah, react to whatever Toadizel tries to do. <laughs> <laughs> I do like this uh, that Toadizel's actually changing the range that he's playing at right now, forcing the rock play. And see, if Mallow wasn't quite quite prepared for it potentially. Got knocked by a few rocks in a row. Didn't quite take advantage of that uh, that wall tech there. So, really strong tool that Crag has is because uh, he's neutral air so fast. You can do invincible nares out of a wall tech if you just uh, cancel it with a double jump. So since he has the pillar of the wall, what if, uh, what something that a lot of Crag players do is they often do the tech double jump nair straight away. It just gives them like an invincible aggressive option to get back to the stage. Huh. It's something that's really important in a lot of matchups, Rano being one of them. Um, Rasta is like a really significant one that's really important in. Right. Right, it just makes God, the more I know about Crag's options that close against the wall there on his pillar, the scarier it becomes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the big thing is preventing Crag from getting to that position in general, which we can see Melotech's potentially feeling out, but didn't quite commit to there. Um, I feel like the way that Toadizzle was drifting, Melo definitely had an opportunity to chase him out, but... Obviously, get the tech chase there with the Dac uh, Dacus. Yeah. Seals the stock. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, calling so out the pillar. Here we go. That's some of the pillars that I was saying, like, potentially could have put Toadizzle in trouble. You get punished there. Didn't take too much percent for it, thankfully. Yeah, nice. Yeah, Very well done. Out the stock. Just uh, missed, missed tech from the rock there. It's a good a good rock to set up. Um, you have to time it really well, though, since Rano's up special does clip it. Oh, no double jump. And yeah, actually another missed opportunity from Malotech there. Crag without resources there, they have to pillar. And yeah. just not chase him out. I, yeah. just, I, I feel like there's been um, a couple opportunities where Toad is all really allowed uh, Malotech to come down and chase him. It just hasn't, hasn't happened. Yeah, just a lot of missed opportunities on Melo's part. And it's allowed, you know, Toad to get right back up in this, in this game on this last stock. Oh. Did catch him in the air, so Toadizzle was able to get away from potential counter attempt there. We're in that scary position, 122%. Putting my breath, and it's just. Rando being at 90, at just a couple of hits. It like they're pretty much dead to upstrong here, I believe. Absolutely. <laughs> I love the patience from Mello there. Didn't commit to any options, just moving around, trying to feel out Toadizzle's Toadizzle's options, forcing out a mistake, and that pillar. <gasps> the bear. Oh that's it! Back air the does catch off. it. I just I, I wasn't sure about that pillar position. It just sort of set up a situation where Malotech could feel out that back air. Well, it's quite far out.